Hello, good evening. And um, so, yeah, here I am standing up here as a sex, pleasure and intimacy coach. And someone said to me last week, the reason you must be doing this work is you must, uh, must have been really, really good at sex. And I was like, well, actually, it's exactly the opposite as to why I ended up in this role. So many, many years ago, I was in a place where I was absolutely terrified of sex. I had fantasies which I was feeling such shame around and confusion, being raised a very good girl, and these were not very good girl fantasies. Um, I thought my genitals were deformed, and I had huge issues over my body, and also my self-esteem was very low. And so um, this took me on a sexual journey, and I didn't think sort of 15 years later I'd be standing here talking to all of you lot, because this certainly wasn't discussed at my career service. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd like to share with you something today um, that is um, really foundational that I'd work with all my clients on to help them to overcome sexual problems, but also to have more pleasure. And so um, I've got some little slides, so let me start. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about how we learn sex. So Often, our first sexual experiences are under the covers and we masturbate, learning, learning to masturbate quickly and quietly with a lot of shame. And we don't have any education. If you're somebody in this room who's got, had good sex education, then you are definitely a rare being indeed. And then we learn through um, fumbling around, porn, the movies, very limited reference points um, that we learn from. We also don't have any culture of practice when it comes to sex. If a band plays at the Manchester Evening News Arena, they have put in hours and hours of practice to show up and play this amazing concert, yet we're just expected to show up in the bedroom and produce the final concert without any rehearsals whatsoever. <laughs> and there's this sort of all-pervasive myth that we should just know how to do sex, that we should just know what our partner wants and that our partner should just know what we want, this amazing sort of mythical telepathic, telepathic sex. And if we don't, there's something up with us. But actually, we do need to learn. We do need to practice um, because we're, our pleasure, our bodies are changing all of the time. You know, our sexual journey is an evolution. We're changing um, on so many levels as we age, menopause, um, after having children, all sorts of things, our pleasure changes. So how we learn sex is what I call the performance model of sex. And you could look at it something like this. I had a client phone me up the other week and he said, the way I do sex, this is after ending a relationship. This relationship ended because the woman said that she wasn't happy with how his, he, he was um, performing sexually. He said, the way I do sex is painting by numbers. And so it's like I go from one to two to three. So it's like I kiss the lips, I kiss the breasts, then we'll go for the genitals, then we'll penetrate. And he never deviated off that. And so um, this sort of way that we learn sex is what I call the performance model. It's very goal orientated. So the focus is on the goal of having to have an erection, having to have an orgasm, all of these different goals. And while there's nothing wrong with that, if that's the only way that we do sex, that can become limited. And with that, um, there's a certain set of behaviors. So for example, if we're focused on the goal, then we can't be 100% fully present in the moment because we're always thinking ahead of what next. So people often say to me, um, um, they're all having all sorts of inner dialogue in their sexual experience of, am I doing it right? Um, what should I do next? Are they enjoying it, yet not communicating around it? So the so, so when I'm working with my clients, I um, help them with something that I call the, perform the pleasure model. And I'm going to share with you tonight what I call your erotic toolkit. And I've just deliberately chosen this slide because there's some toys there, some Lego blocks, and, and, and also this is about fun. So often we take our sex lives so seriously, trying to strive to be this perfect sexual being that we forget to enjoy ourselves. And so this toolkit that I want to share with you tonight helps you to access more pleasure. And I think at the moment, there's so much in the media um, about, for women, for example, of how to have multiple orgasms, how to have cervical orgasms, G-spot orgasms, left toe orgasms, all sorts of different things. But actually, they just become goals of, of themselves. And for me, when I'm working with people, I go, let's just work to have more pleasure. If those things happen, wonderful. But if we make those as goals, then they become something we have to effort at rather than just relax and enjoy. So these practices that I'm going to share with you tonight are very simple. 
You can apply them to your solo sex practice as well as partner sex. Um, and they are practices, you know, I really invite you to take these away and be curious about how you do sex because most of us do it on autopilot. We just do what we do and we don't really know why we've done it and how we've learnt it. So I really ask you to be curious about what you do and how you do it. Um, and also for me, when it comes to pleasure, if you imagine our pleasure that we can experience in our body is like broadband and it's like, what's, what was it before broadband? ADSL or something like that. So we're on ADSL frequency. And then as we practice this toolkit, we can, exp we can expand out so that we can go to fiber optics. And then as we practice a bit more, we might go to infinity broadband. And because um, really what we can experience in terms of our pleasure is absolutely unlimited. And by, um, you know, these practices are things that you can practice for life. I mean, I've been working with them 15 years and, and I'm still not bored. So how do we work with them? So one of the things I'm going to share with you, which I find is often a game changer for some of the clients that I work with, is our state of being. Typical working day, you've left the office or wherever you work, stressed out, um, you've maybe kids playing up, all sorts of different things going on. We just live very fast paced, busy lives. So how do we transition from this into this? So how do we move from busyness and doing and stress into relaxation and being? So it's really great to find out what are the keys that work for you because what's different, for, what's, what's great for you might be different than your partner's. So for one person it might be to spend time together and chat, for the other person it might be to go and have a bath on your own. So finding the keys that help you to slow down. I've got a, a client recently, for her it's when she comes back from the office, she just lights candles and it just demarks the day and changes her mood. So whatever works, I think you might be somebody who can get straight down to it. So next, breathe. Okay, this one is, if you take one thing away, this is the number one, one thing. So we breathe very shallowly. Um, Barbara Corellis, who Sean was talking about, she says that we just literally breathe to the top third of our lungs and our capacity for breathing is so much more than we allow ourselves. So this isn't just about experiencing more pleasure, quite literally, the more we breathe, the more we can feel. This is also about feeling aliveness and feeling sensation in our body. It works on so many different levels. So by consciously deep breathing um, is really, really important. Next is make some noise. So many people, I, I, I'm, it's, it's, lots of people really don't make any noise at all during their sexual activity or they wait till the end, okay? <laughs> And with that, we often have our jaws clamped and we're like tense in the bodies. But actually, if we relax our jaw and breathe and allow ourselves to make noise, and it's not like about necessarily making wailing and screaming like a banshee, though, if you want to do that, enjoy it. But it's more just about if we take a breath, we're ha, ah, And just that alone can actually change how we experience the pleasure in our bodies. Next is move. We can become very rigid, whether it's self-pleasure, whether it's partner pleasure, and we can also carry a lot of tension. Particularly the hips can get locked, the buttocks can get very tense. And those sort of behaviors actually can cultivate things like ejaculating sooner than you might like to. So just noticing where you're carrying tension and where the body's locked can really make a difference and just allowing the body and the pelvis particularly to relax. Then we have, where do we place our attention? So, some people, it's really hard to be present in our sexual experiences. That may be for all sorts of reasons. It may be because of past traumas. It may be because we're just busy, busy lives, all sorts of different reasons. So just noticing how present you are can be the first step. And then what can we do to have more attention on the experience? But I would also invite you, how do you cultivate more attention onto your own body? because often our attention is on the other person, uh, which can be great. But actually, we've got lots of subtle sensations that we may be missing out on if our attention is scattered or in different places. So it's just another thing to consider. Next is, um, is, is to include the whole body. Often the focus is just on the genitals and the breasts and the nipples. And, you know, rightly so, they can feel fantastic. However, for me, the whole body is this incredible erotic continent to explore. The Taoists, uh, one tradition of the Taoists say that the body has 21 different erogenous zones, yet we just focus on the primary ones and we're really missing out on lots of pleasure and lots of possibility. 
And this takes time and practice to explore because sometimes it's like um, these sensations might be lying dormant if they've not been paid attention to. But with time and presence and breath and attention, we can really bring the rest of the body to life. And, you know, I don't even give people the list. I've had clients come back and go, my God, I never knew how sensitive my ankles were. So you just never know what you might find. Next is to take a leaf out of this guy's book and slow down. And when we slow down, it changes what's happening in our body. So actually not just slow down, sometimes even pause. And I say to people, slow down and then slow down another 50% because we, we speed up so quickly. It's just in our nature and in our society. So just keep that in mind. And sometimes when we pause and we're still, magic can happen in those moments. And then our arousal can be in our bodies in a more relaxed way rather than the tension-based way when we're going for the trajectory of just getting faster and faster and faster. Um, oops. Um, then the next is take a leap of faith and trust your body. And this has been mentioned before with the other speakers. I believe that we all have our own inbuilt natural erotic wisdom that knows exactly what to do beyond the mind. It's like we have our innate sort of erotic sat-nav. And so just by tuning in and following what does my body want to do next well, rather than what I think I should do or what I did last time, and you might surprise yourself. And then next is communicate. It is amazing how many people don't communicate in their sexual experiences. One client said to me this week, his reason for not communicating is he doesn't want to be seen as not knowing what to do. And that's a really common thing. So communicate and find a way to communicate that's positive. I had a woman in my course last week and she, we were talking about how do we take our pleasure from okay to oh my God. And sometimes it might be, could you just slow down a little bit or could you just go a little bit lighter? But we can feel that we're going to upset the other person if we say things. So there can be all sorts of things. And I know Sue's going to give some great examples around this. So I really invite you to find a language that works. And then finally, my final message is to take responsibility for your pleasure. Your pleasure is your responsibility, nobody else's. So to learn about your body, learn about what you like, learn how to communicate it. And then if we meet with another and we're both taking responsibility for our pleasure, we're going to create much more of a gourmet feast than if we're looking for the other to know how to pleasure us and to please us. So thank you so much. Um, just to say I'm here if you want, I want, to, want to have a chat about anything I've spoke about. And if you want to email me on my website, I will send you a little goodie bag in, of, of, uh, on my email and I'll send you a copy of the erotic toolkit. So let me know how you get on and thank you so much. <laughs>